Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for being with us today for this first uh, DECTO webinar from UTAC Group. Uh, this webinar will be animated by Olivier Collin, which is a regulation expert for heavy-duty vehicles for UTAC. UTAC is a leading international group in the field of testing, type approval, certification, and new technology for autonomous and connected cars. We have a great expertise in all domains related to mobility and uh, new connectivity. We are present in the automotive, transport, petrochemical and defense sectors, and we are the only Euro NCAP laboratory in France. We have eight test centers around the world in France, in UK, in Finland, in Morocco and in the US. And we are about one and three hundred employees around the world. And now let me introduce Olivier Collin, which will uh, animate the webinar. So good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for joining uh, this webinar that uh, UTAC has planned today in order for you to discover uh, more about a European project, um, a project that uh, concerns you, professional and manufacturer of uh, heavy duty trailers. So for this webinar, we have planned uh, an overview in five steps. First, uh, we will start with uh, background on CO2 EU regulation for trucks introduced uh, in uh, 2018 for tractor units uh, and two and, and three categories. Uh, next, we will go into the topic itself uh, with a summary of key points on, on the project. Uh, for the third part, we will make a focus on the key dates to remember as, at this step of the project. Then uh, we will provide uh, an overview of how UTAC services can help a trailer manufacturer or supplier to prepare for implementation of uh, this new regulation. And um, to finish, uh, then we will open the floor for a Q&A session. So to start with, uh, it's important to take a step back to understand how uh, this regulatory project for O3 and O4 vehicle was created. Well, uh, you should know that the uh, European Commission never regulated CO2 emission for heavy duty vehicle until uh, 2018, when the European regulation 2017-2400, also called uh, VECTO for Vehicle Energy Consumption Calculation Tool, is entried uh, into force. So what's uh, this uh, regulation 2017-2400? Uh, well, um, it's a regulation which aims to define a uniform methodology for the assessment of fuel consumption and CO2 emission for each new vehicle produced. And for this, um, the regulation uses the Vector Simulation Tool, which is a software package designed uh, by the Commission and uh, is uh, publicly uh, available for three parts in charge of type approval, namely manufacturers, technical service and authority. So today, uh, which kind of vehicle are currently uh, affected by this regulation? Um, then the most tractor and rigid trucks with uh, maximum permissible uh, mass more than uh, 7.5 tonnes have been included uh, in the scope of application since, since uh, last year. Um, I say uh, most uh, AV vehicle um, because there are still some uh, exemption which will be fully integrated uh, in the near future as for example some uh, special vehicle or uh, new uh, powertrain technology as a hybrid or uh, electric powertrain. And uh, how European Commission has uh, managed uh, this, uh, the implementation of this regulation? Well, um, because of the large number of uh, configuration and application of uh, AV tractor and ROI, um, the Commission uh, has uh, made a vehicle group system according to mass and axle configuration criteria and uh, proposed a gradual timeline for each group of vehicle. Um, but um, the most important things to remember about this slide is that um, for the last two years, trucks manufacturers have been uh, required to approve uh, CO2 emission for each new vehicle. So we have just uh, discussed uh, about uh, the launch of uh, Vector 
uh, trucks regulation. And now we will stay uh, in this uh, same topics for a moment with the slide, with this slide, sorry, uh, which explain the main rules for approved trucks CO2 emission. First, you should note that when the, the text was draft, um, the European Commission quickly declined the idea to approve CO2 emission with a direct exhaust measurement as, uh, as uh, with a light duty vehicle. So, uh, why uh, this choice? Uh, well, uh, because of the large number of uh, configuration and application for industrial vehicle, as we discussed in the previous slide, um, Commission um, decided to adopt uh, another approach with, uh, which uh, consists of uh, splitting the vehicle and separating all components that contribute um, to the vehicle fuel consumption. Um, as such, uh, is, uh, each of these uh, key elements are individually approved according to the test procedure defined in the regulation. <coughs> These components, which have a significant uh, influence on fuel consumption and CO2, include all powertrain components uh, that will be measured on test bench, such as uh, engine and uh, its uh, fuel, uh, fuel map, uh, also transmission efficiency, axle friction, and to finish, a uh, tire with their rolling resistance. And the last element which, uh, which is uh, characterized on the, on the test track is, uh, is the air drag uh, of the trucks, which we will look uh, with more details uh, later in the presentation. So once uh, all uh, these data have been approved individually, what next? Um, well, um, all the data from uh, these approved components will be loaded uh, in vector tools, which will then simulate different uh, mission profile with uh, several payloads uh, as well as different auxiliary equipment as um, air conditioning, power takeoff, etc. in order to assess, assess uh, fuel consumption of the individual vehicle and the CO2 uh, emission resulting. So, in conclusion, what we need to remember from this part is that each vehicle is considered as an assembly of approved components and will be provided at the end with certificate of conformity in which uh, fuel consumption and CO2 value will be reported. <coughs> so before to moving on the vector trailer presentation, um, we would like to show you with this slide uh, the influence of each element we, we just mentioned and especially the air drag and tire rolling resistance which, which will be um, of interest when we get uh, to the vector trailer part. So on the left is the representation of the combustion engine and how the, in the energy contained in the fuel is used. And as you can see, uh, only one third of this energy is converted into mechanical energy. The other two parts are either dissipated uh, as uh, heat in exhaust or used for coolant engine. Now let's have a look at the chart on the right which shows how the mechanical energy supplied by the engine is distributed uh, on each of the elements included in vector tool. So here uh, it can be seen that for long haul or regional usage, uh, the rolling resistance uh, represented in pink and uh, the air drag in blue clearly uh, have a dominant weight uh, when compared to the other components. Well, um, we can conclude from this slide uh, then the two factors um, as the two main source of fuel consumption and CO2 for, tra for tractor units. Now that we have just a look at uh, the air drag effect on the fuel consumption and CO2 emission of the trucks, uh, the idea uh, here is to make a focus on the way air drag is approved today. So, uh, as uh, previously uh, mentioned, um, the air drag of, the tr of a truck uh, must be measured on test truck according to the regulation instruction. And for this test, the manufacturer shall present to the approval authority um, a complete vehicle composed to a perfect representative cab and a semi trailer, trailer which shall meet standard specification uh, as required by regulation for 
dimension, weight, uh, axle configuration, tire size, and also uh, auxiliaries. Uh, well, as we can see on the slide, um, at the end of the test, the final air drag uh, value of the combination shun, uh, trucks and trailer will be used uh, as input data for vector simulation. So, um, why is this method uh, real cab and uh, standard trailer? Um, well, um, as I said, vector regulation currently in force um, is focused on CO2 emission of AV tractor and only on that vehicle category. And the fact to assess uh, air drag with a standard trailer is a simple way for commission to give a unique methodology for all manufacturers. So, with this method, commission can also easily uh, compare the performance of the various cabs on the market, from European market. But um, on the other hand, this fast-track approach uh, has a little weakness uh, because um, it doesn't allow to measure the real air drag and therefore the real CO2 of the complete vehicle which um, with its uh, final uh, trailer in the real world. Uh, this is why the um, European Commission is now proposing a new regulation in order to assess uh, the influence of uh, US 3 and O4 trailers on CO2 emission of uh, the motor vehicle. And now uh, for this second part regarding vector trailer, um, how does the Commission uh, plan to proceed? Well, quite simply, uh, by imagine a reverse methodology compared to the one uh, we have just described for vector, uh, vector trucks. That means uh, we will work on a generic uh, truck cabs with a standard dimension in orange on slide linked to a real semi-trailer with real, re real dimension. And uh, um, it's this combination that will be simulated by the vector trailer tools which uh, is a separate software from the Vector Trucks tool that we talked about during the first part of the presentation. So now that we have uh, seen the main practice for Vector Trailer, what's the way for approve uh, this vehicle combination? Uh, well, uh, unlike uh, Vector Trucks, the good news is uh, no testing will be required here since uh, Vector Trailer Tools will do everything itself, including the air drag calculation. But um, on the other hand, um, for Vector Trailer Tools run simulation, um, it will need some data as any software. And uh, it's on this aspect that all approval logic will be, will be based. Um, so why? Um, well, because all data uh, to be loaded uh, in vector tools will have to correspond in all points to the real configuration of uh, the individual trailer. And to give uh, you some example, we have uh, put on the screen the main uh, input data for vector trailer tool. So first, we have some mass and dimension approved value. That means for the timeline, the vehicle will uh, first have to be approved in terms of mass and dimension before, before uh, it can be approved according uh, to vector regulation. Second example of uh, input data is the tire running resistance value which have uh, just seen before and for this part uh, it's up to the tire manufacturer to provide the data to the trailer manufacturer and at the end of uh, for calculation vector will also need some uh, other input parameters such as the coupling technology axel configuration but also data about um, aerodynamic device if fitted on the trailers but um, we will come back uh, on these components uh, with further details in the next slide. So, as we have just seen before um, uh, on the previous slide, the challenge here um, is to ensure that the correct data uh, are loaded uh, in vector trailers tools uh, in order to perform a relevant uh, simulation and, most important, provide a good result corresponding to the configuration of the individual vehicle. And to do this, um, trailer manufacturer will have to implement uh, data management systems with several functionalities, 
which are all described in the regulation. <coughs> Once ready, uh, the manufacturer will uh, submit his application for an approval to the authority, which will monitor the process and uh, check uh, that simulation are conducted uh, on, uh, in a correct manner. And at the end, uh, a vector license certificate will be issued to the manufacturer, which will give uh, him to the legal right to perform his own vector simulation and register all new product trailer. So once this license is obtained, um, the question is now, um, is the approval process complete? Um, then uh, the answer will be yes for trailer without aerodynamic device but uh, for trailer manufacturer uh, wishing to fit uh, this kind of equipment uh, an additional uh, approval step will be required um, and this is what we are trying to show with this slide um, with uh, the commission intention on the left and first commission id uh, with this new regulation is to monitor CO2 emission of uh, vehicle marketing in the union and then uh, to gradually force manufacturers to reduce uh, their influence on CO2 emission. Um, you should note that uh, this is exactly the same way set up for trucks which will uh, have to reduce uh, their emission by 30% uh, in uh, 2030 compared to uh, 2018 status. So to move uh, reduced emission, trailer builder will have three options. Uh, first one uh, will be to reduce uh, the approved uh, vehicle mass. Second one uh, is to optimize or constrain their supplier to reduce the rolling resistance of tire. And the third solution will be to reduce uh, the aerodynamic resistance, for example, by means of a device such as an uh, underbody deflector, reflap, or also uh, lateral uh, cover sides. So it's important to know this slight solution that the European Commission recognizes a significant way to reduce CO2 and therefore um, wants to provide a means for manufacturers to support this kind of device. And this is why Commission uh, has draft uh, a procedure uh, to approve the efficiency of and the benefit of these components regarding global air drag vehicle. So to explain the uh, basic uh, practice required for trailer aerodynamic device approval, we have uh, made on the left the procedure described on the previous slide for the air drag uh, approval on trucks. So remember when I told the, um, this value is measured with a vehicle on a test track and was once approved, this value used as uh, for vector input data. Well, for trailer aerodynamic device approval, mm, the commission um, has uh, chosen a virtual method instead uh, of physical measurements in order to keep uh, an economical approach. So, unfortunately, we will not have time today to get uh, into details of this uh, virtual method, but you should know this uh, method will be based on the flui fluid uh, dynamics uh, calculation, which will be performed on the from three-dimensional vehicle models provided by Commission. Then um, it will be up to the manufacturer of the device uh, to design three-dimensional di uh, components by means of uh, computer aid design and fit it uh, on the virtual vehicle to assess um, the efficiency of the component. Uh, once manufacturers has a um, complete calculation and approved results by uh, approval authority, then the aerodynamic device will become uh, an input data for vector trailer tools in the same way of mice, uh, dimension, uh, tire and uh, other. Now just have a look uh, about the timeline of uh, this uh, regulatory project. So you, you should note that uh, the European Commission plans uh, to publish uh, regulation at the beginning of uh, the second half of uh, next uh, year and we probably uh, allow one to one and a half years for the manufacturer to uh, implement uh, the regulation. 
So, uh, in the base case, uh, manufacturers would have uh, until the end of 2023 to set up in the order uh, the data management process, collect uh, tire data from their supplier, uh, approve the third dynamic device for concerned trailer, and finally uh, get the vector license approval. Then um, you will tell me that uh, there is still two years before the final deadline, what seems to be quite. Yes, but be careful because um, according to our great experience with uh, implementation of uh, the Vector Trucks regulation, there is a lot of uh, work to perform all steps we have just described before. And therefore we recommend start thinking about uh, it now and not wait the deadline. It's really, really important. So how uh, can uh, Hutax support manufacturers in their efforts from now? Well, um, already on the first part regarding uh, implementation of uh, Vector Input Data Management System, uh, then you should know that we are currently working on a training module for this topic, which is a training program uh, developed on the Vector Truck Feedback with uh, international manufacturers. You can also note that uh, our homologation team uh, offer a regulatory consulting session for the development of uh, your process until Vector license is granted. On the second part, more, techni uh, more technical uh, side, uh, which concern aerodynamics device approval, um, then NewTAC also offer training module aimed to directly uh, at the trailer manufacturer or uh, its supplier. Uh, and for the companies uh, wishing to outsource the fluid, uh, fluid uh, dynamic calculation activity, please note that uh, UTAC will be able to offer you a turnkey solution, including uh, dimensional um, modeling, computational uh, fluid dynamic simulation, and also uh, drafting of the technical report required for an approval. So to summarize, uh, we are now able to offer you a global UTAC services covering three main uh, topics. First um, is training, with the aim to give you all the key to define your strategy for homologation linked uh, with your project. Um, second one is uh, regulatory consulting to support you along your approval project. And finally, a complete service, including a virtual test for the aerodynamic component approval. I am now finished. Um, before leaving, uh, let me thanks uh, for your participation and your attention.